This video is sponsored by Connell Guides. To get your hands on the most intelligent study guides on the market for GCSE and A-level English Literature, as well as GCSE and A-level History, visit connellguides.com and use code RS15 at checkout for 15% off your order. So Tybalt is a pretty important character in William Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet. But what can we actually say about him? Let's find out. What's going on Revision Squad? It's me, Liam, aka Mr Knight, aka Dystopia Junkie, and in this video we are going to focus on the character of Tybalt and how he is presented in William Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet. To do that, we are going to have a think about who Tybalt is as a character, what his story role is, and what he might symbolise, represent, or be a metaphor for. Then we are going to discuss 10 quotations that relate to him, digging deep into Shakespeare's language choices and writerly techniques as we do so. Then, at the end, I will pose a big question for you to think about, which should hopefully help you to secure your understanding of this key character. My goal here is to help you out as you study or revise Shakespeare's play. If I am successful in doing that, please do let me know by giving this video a like or writing a comment on it, sharing it around with anyone else who might benefit from watching it, and subscribing to my channel if you haven't already. Now, I know that nobody likes those cringy YouTuber begs, but given that more than three quarters of you who watch my videos aren't actually subscribed to my channel, and given that I'd also quite like to reach 10,000 subscribers by the end of 2022, I'd really appreciate it if you could help me out. So thank you so much in advance. All right then, now that all of that cringy introductory stuff is out of the way, just who is Tybalt? What is his story role? And what might he represent? As a character, Tybalt is fairly straightforward. You see, he's Juliet's cousin, with his father being Lady Capulet's brother. Now this means that he is associated with the Capulet family. This association of course gives him a certain status within Verona and suggests that he comes from a wealthy background. After all, Lord Capulet would not have married somebody poor. In terms of his story role, you could say that Tybalt is one of Romeo and Juliet's antagonists. This impression of him becomes apparent in how he starts fights, attempts to start fights, or makes sure that pre-existing fights escalate and become much, much worse. This is of course antagonistic behaviour because it prevents the play's characters from having a nice time, whereas his particular desire to fight Romeo ultimately makes life more difficult for the young Montague, for by slaying Tybalt, Romeo is banished from Verona and separated from his wife. Furthermore, Tybalt really does seem to have a particular hatred for Romeo, and so you could say that Tybalt is Romeo's rival, adversary, or nemesis. Now, how sympathetic you feel about Tybalt will determine what you consider him to be a symbol, representation, or metaphor for. An unsympathetic view of the young man might lead you to argue that he is violence personified, given that almost all of his dialogue and actions relate to aggressive behaviour and physical violence in some way. However, you could also argue that Tybalt represents extreme family loyalty, given that a lot of his violent tendencies are inspired by his allegiance with the Capulets and subsequent hatred for the Montagues. In this sense, you could even suggest that Tybalt embodies the feud that exists between the two families, given how seriously he takes on this hatred for the Montagues. So, that is what you might say about who Tybalt is, what his story role is, and what he might be a symbol, representation, or metaphor for. But which quotations could you analyse if asked to write about Tybalt, and what could you say about them? So let's begin right at the start of the play, and consider how Tybalt is presented there. Here, we are going to focus on not one, not two, but three quotations, each of which contribute to the initial impression we get of Tybalt. But what are those quotations? Well, they are... Enter Tybalt, drawing his sword. What, art thou drawn among these heartless hinds? Turn thee, Benvolio, look upon thy death. And what, drawn and talk of peace? 
I hate the word, as I hate hell, all Montagues, and thee. So then, what do these quotations tell us about Tybalt? The first quotation immediately associates him with violence, for the stage direction drawing his sword creates the impression that he reaches for his weapon as soon as he enters the scene, looking to take part in a fight before he fully understands why a fight is taking place at all. Violence appears to be Tybalt's first instinct, rather than logic. But Tybalt is not just violent in a reactionary way, for he is proactively threatening and aggressive too. This is apparent in the second quotation, in which Tybalt's use of the imperative, look upon thy death, sees him threaten to murder Benvolio simply because he is a Montague. Tybalt's aggressiveness is perhaps all the more apparent because it is the peaceful Benvolio who he threatens, because a reasonable person would not think that Benvolio has particularly done much to deserve such an extreme threat. Last of all, these lines suggest that Tybalt is not just violent and aggressive, but that he is the antithesis of peacefulness. Now this is evident in the third quotation, in which Tybalt uses the emotive verb hate to describe how he feels about peace. In fact, his detestation of peace is so strong that it moves him to use a list of three to explain just how much he hates it, for Tybalt hates peace just as much as he hates hell, the Montagues, and in this exact moment, Benvolio. Suggesting that he hates peace just as much as he hates hell is an extreme comparison to make, given Verona's religious context. But to say that he hates peace just as much as he hates the Montagues also highlights just how much Tybalt embodies the feud and is reluctant to see its end. Overall then, how do these quotations present Tybalt? Well, simply put, violent. Extremely violent. This impression influences most of the following impressions of Tybalt we get throughout the play, so it is definitely worth keeping in mind as you continue to watch this video and think about this character. Next, let's consider how Tybalt is presented during the Capulet ball scene. In particular, let's see how he responds to finding out that Romeo is attending the party. We're going to look at two quotations, which are Now, by the stock and honour of my kin, to strike him dead I hold it not a sin. And, it fits when such a villain is a guest, I'll not endure him. So these quotations reveal the extent to which Tybalt's violent tendencies are dictated by his sense of family loyalty. This is evident in the first quotation, in which Tybalt mentions the honour of his kin, a noun that means family. Now in the name of his family's honour, Tybalt states that he would not consider it a sin if he were to strike Romeo dead, given that the young Montague is his family's bitter enemy. Now this commitment to family loyalty and the violence that it inspires override Tybalt's ability to behave himself at the ball. His simple declarative sentence, I'll not endure him, reveals that Tybalt is unable to tolerate the fact that Romeo is at the Capulet Ball, with the strong modal verb will highlighting just how strong Tybalt's displeasure is and his determination to do something about Romeo being there. Together, these quotations suggest that family loyalty has caused Tybalt to despise Romeo so much that he is willing to attack the young Montague at the Capulet Ball, despite the fact that this will cause a scene at a party. We're going to stay in the Capulet Ball for the next quotation, this time looking at how Tybalt responds to Lord Capulet, telling him to behave himself and not cause a scene by attacking Romeo. Although initially resistant, Tybalt eventually says, Patience perforce with willful column meeting makes my flesh tremble in their different greeting. So these lines create the impression that Tybalt is an impatient character. This impression is initially evoked by the alliterative phrase patience perforce. The adverb perforce actually means by force or under compulsion, so grouping these two words together suggests that Tybalt is not naturally a patient character, but that he must be forced to be patient instead. This impression is reinforced by the phrase makes my flesh tremble, for the verb tremble suggests that behaving patiently is so unnatural for Tybalt that it prompts a physical response and perhaps even a sense of bodily discomfort. Indeed, you could even argue that the phrase different greeting, which refers back to the willful collar meeting of the previous line that sees Tybalt acknowledge the minor clash that he and Lord Capulet have just had, 
also highlights the fact that Tybalt is an impatient character. This is because the adjective different implies that Lord Capulet's patience is incredibly alien to Tybalt. And now we're going to look at two quotations from Act 2, Scene 4, neither of which come from Tybalt himself. Instead, they come from Benvolio and Mercutio. Remember that when you are writing about how a certain character is presented, you don't just have to draw upon the things they say. Analyzing the things that other characters say about them or how other characters react to them is also something that you can do. So then, what are those quotations from Benvolio and Mercutio? Well, they are. Tybalt, the kinsman to old Capulet, have sent a letter to his father's house. And, oh, he's the courageous captain of compliments. He fights as you sing, prick song, keeps time, distance and proportion. He rests his minim rests, one, two and the third in your bosom, the very butcher of a silk button. A duelist, a duelist, a gentleman of the very first house of the first and second cause. Ah, the immortal Passado, the Punto Reverso, the Hay. So then, these quotations are interesting because they somewhat negate or contradict the earlier impressions we get of Tybalt as being mindlessly aggressive and violent. This is because in the first quotation, we learn that Tybalt, although a violent character, conducts his violence with a degree of decorum and etiquette. This impression is created when we learn that Tybalt hath sent a letter to his father's house, with the pronoun his referring to Romeo in this case. Now this letter is implied to contain a formal invitation to a duel, presumably because Tybalt is still very irritated by seeing Romeo at the Capulet Ball. By formally inviting Romeo to a duel rather than just attacking him out of nowhere, we see that Tybalt's violence is actually somewhat civilised, bizarrely. Now, Mercutio is aware of Tybalt's oxymoronic civilised violence, which causes him to mock Tybalt throughout his dialogue. Now, I am aware that Mercutio's quotation is pretty long, so I'm going to discuss various aspects of it, and so you can choose which part of it you want to analyse in your own writing. For instance, when Mercutio says that Tybalt fights as you sing, he suggests that although Tybalt is a skilled fighter, his fighting is perhaps more artistic than it is deadly. Our next example is when Mercutio calls Tybalt a butcher of a silk button, which suggests that Mercutio thinks that Tybalt will do more harm to people's clothing than he will to the people actually wearing it, almost as if all of his aggression is merely for show and he isn't actually a very good fighter. Last of all, the italicisation of Passado, Punto Reverso and Hay, all of which are sword fighting techniques, suggests to me that Mercutio is sarcastically listing them, an effect reinforced by the exclamation ah and the later exclamation mark. By sarcastically listing the sword fighting techniques that Tybalt has learned, we get the impression that Mercutio does not take them particularly seriously, dismissing Tybalt's violence because it is restrained or choreographed rather than being brutal and unrestrained. You know what? Mercutio gives us another pretty good quotation related to Tybalt later on in the play. In Act 3, Scene 1, the fight scene, Mercutio calls Tybalt, Good King of Cats! Now this is an absolutely wonderful quotation. Although it is short, there are loads of things you can say about it. First of all, calling Tybalt the King of Cats sees Mercutio mock Tybalt. This is because he highlights the fact that Tybalt shares a name with the character Tybalt from the popular story Reynard the Fox from Shakespeare's time. So basically this sees Mercutio engage in quite childish behaviour by resorting to playground name calling, much like how you might call someone a name of a kid's TV show character if you wanted to tease them and their names are similar. Ultimately, because people want to mock and tease him, this suggests that Tybalt does not necessarily have a great reputation around Verona, or that certain people just straight up don't like him. Next, let's look at the noun cats. This word has various connotations, thanks to the reputation that cats have. Cats are agile and sly and fickle, and in Shakespeare's time they had a fairly negative reputation thanks to their association with witches and the contemporary belief that they were at least partially responsible for the Black Death. 
By calling Tybalt the king of cats, Mercutio suggests that Tybalt not only embodies all of these negative qualities, but that he epitomises them, given that he is not just a cat, but the king of them. And so these negative qualities are exaggerated. Last of all, and I will keep this brief, the word cats sounds like the Italian word cazzo, which is actually very, very offensive. As such, we see that Tybalt is strongly disliked by certain characters, given the strength of the insults that they throw against him. And last of all, let's look at Tybalt's reaction once he kills Mercutio, which is... Exeunt Tybalt and followers. Now this quotation creates a nice and simple impression about Tybalt, for the stage directions suggest that Tybalt is a coward. This is because the verb exeunt means that a group of characters have exited the stage. In this context, Tybalt leaving the stage suggests that he is a coward who cannot immediately face up to the consequences of his actions. Now this is interesting because it shows that as much as Tybalt is aggressive and threatens to be violent throughout the play, when it actually comes to him mortally wounding someone, a likely consequence of his violence of course, his first response is to flee. Now this does make me wonder if all of Tybalt's aggressiveness is in fact just bravado, for as much as he talks a big talk, he is clearly not used to acting upon it. So I reckon I have analysed 10 quotations about Tybalt now, so that wraps up the analysis segment of this video. But don't close it just yet, because you wouldn't want to miss out on today's big question, would you? So then, today's big question is... Is Tybalt's violence justified? Why? Now what you do with that question is completely up to you. It could be used to form the basis of a flashcard or mind map, it could stimulate discussion and debate with your friends and classmates if you are revising together, or it could even prompt a short evaluative paragraph. And you know where would be an excellent place for that paragraph? That's right, the comment section down below. Honestly, I love seeing the brilliant ideas that you lot come up with, and if you're feeling brave enough to share them with me, I will make sure to respect that by giving them a read and even some quick feedback too. So why not give it a go? I really do look forward to reading the things that you have to say. And with that question still lingering in your mind, I guess it is time for me to wrap up this video. Genuinely, I really do hope that you have found it to be helpful and that you feel a bit more confident when it comes to studying or revising Shakespeare's play as a result of watching it. If this video has helped you out, please do consider giving it a like, writing a comment on it to let me know, sharing it around with anyone else who might benefit from watching it, and of course subscribing to my channel if you haven't already. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Please remember that, as always, I hope that you have an awesome rest of the day. If you are revising, please do take frequent short breaks. As a burned out student, it's not a happy or successful student, which is what I think you deserve to be. So I'm sure you'll agree with me when I say that Tybalt is a violent character. But the thing is, everybody is going to be saying that in their assessments or exams, and I'm sure you could say something far more interesting instead. For example, could you argue that Tybalt is violence personified? Could you suggest that he takes family loyalty so seriously that he embodies the feud that exists between the Capulets and the Montagues? Or could you even say that he is actually nothing more than a coward, whose acts of violence amount to nothing more than performative bravado? Ultimately, I'll leave that for you to decide. Cheers.